right, so Morgan here for uh, Riff Mag with Donald from Obituary. Thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. You look like you are. <laughs> so, um, first question I wanted to ask you was um, um, because uh, so this year we are 2014. Uh, you started in uh, 1984, so that's 30 years from now, right? I'm very old. <laughs> um, you're said to be like the founding fathers of death metal with other couple other ba other bands. Uh, my question was, uh, what what is what was your journey to death metal? I mean, did you start right away playing death metal, or how did you come to play this kind of music? Yeah, no, I was a musician first. I was a songwriter. I was a very young child, and I learned music at a very young age, but. There was no such thing as death metal. Um, and before I even learned music, it was before I even learned who Black Sabbath was. So for me, it was in Florida, Southern Florida, it was Southern Rock. It was Leonard Skinner and Charlie Daniels and Outlaws and Blackfoot. It was music that had nothing to do with death metal. But that's what inspired me to become a drummer. And I knew at a very young age, by 1977 maybe, I was already playing drums as a eight-year-old child. And I knew it. Um, it was Queen. It was Queen. I was listening to Queen and Charlie Daniels. And I realized that I, I knew how to do it. I'm like, holy shit, I, can't, I think I got this. And that's when it started. And uh, from there on, it was Leonard Skinner. And then next thing, I found out who Black Sabbath was, and it changed everything for me. And then Ronnie James Dio entered my life. And that's it. The rest was history. It was uh, from there on, I just knew I want to play metal. I want to be Ronnie James Dio's drummer. And uh, because that is the. That, that was my goal. That was my dream. Uh, but your music is uh, quite different from what Ronnie James Dio was, was doing. So how do you come to... Because uh, death metal is quite an extreme music style. You, you would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, how do you come to play that, this kind of music? Well, it started obviously with, with Black Sabbath and Ronnie James Dio and Ted Nugent and like heavy AC, of course, and ACDC, of course, and then Metallica entered our lives. And Metallica changed everything for everybody. Everything changed with Kill 'em All. Next thing you know, Slayer entered everybody's lives. And for me, as a drummer, when I heard Slayer, that was it. It set the bar this high, and I'm still, and will never be as good as Dave Lombardo. He was the master. He's the man. He started everything. After that, we knew we're going to try something different. We're, we're going to play what we know we're good at, which is not Slayer. We're not super fast. We're mid-tempo, groovy, slow, heavy. And obituary, we just found our style. That's, I mean, that was it. You have lots of, uh, yeah, fresh influences when we hear uh, the set you were playing today, for example. Yeah, yeah and it, that's all early stuff. What you heard tonight was songs only off the first three albums. The Cause of Death. Cause of Death and Slowly We Rot and The End Complete. Only the first three albums and then we played three of the new songs coming up uh, with the new album in October. Talk to me about this new album. The new album's unbelievable. We spent almost four years writing the album. So it was a long time in the making. And then uh, we actually took it to another level. We recorded the album on our own in our own studio and we mixed it and produced it ourselves in Florida in Florida in Tampa and uh, we could not be more excited about how it turned out did you uh, in Tampa Tampa Bay right uh, did you invite uh, Hulk Hogan to uh, play on your record I did but he didn't show up <laughs> Because I think he was a musician or something like earlier, and you know, and a big fan, uh, apparently, from what I understand. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so um, earlier on, you were saying that tonight was the last show of a very long one you had in Europe. Yeah. Um, most bands 
most bands in 2014 do not do that anymore and um, it was a challenge for us as a band as 44, 45, 46 year old men we were here for six weeks and um, without a bus we were on only planes and only van rides living out of our backpacks because we're playing festivals so you play a festival and then you're shuttled to a airport and then you get on a plane and you go again just to give you an idea of what we go through today 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 yesterday we played summer breeze in germany we were we woke up at 2:30 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> hang on a second. Okay, everything everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> we had a van, what we call bus call, which means you wake up and you gotta make it to the van. 2:30 this morning. We had a bus pick us up, a van, and we did two and a half hours in a van and three plane rides today. Germany to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Paris, Paris to um, Brest, and then a two hour van ride. It was 13 hours that van traveled today to play today. And it was our last show of six weeks. Unbelievable. The schedule would literally probably kill people. If a normal person did this, they would probably want to commit suicide after one or two weeks, and we just did it for six weeks. What do you rely on? Not only at the Heineken, right? It's the passion. It has nothing to do with the Heineken. I'm a drummer. Um, the Heineken comes afterwards or halfway through the set. It's the passion for the music. I know my fans want, they want music. They want obituary in their town. So that's why we're committed. We're committed to playing every planet, every corner of the planet, and we're committed to playing as many festivals as possible. And uh, it's not easy, and Lord knows it's not easy for the band members, especially again at this age. At 20 years old, it wasn't easy. But at 45, it's, it's not easy. Um, it's fun playing drums. It's fun playing on stage, but that's one hour of the day. The rest of it is travel and trains, planes, and automobiles. What was your favorite uh, show during this tour? I would have to say tonight, yeah. and I don't want to. I don't want that to sound like I'm just trying to appeal to the French fans. We were on a long journey. This was six weeks. This was 17 plane rides for us. This was non-stop living out of hotels and vans, backpacks, and having to keep your shit together. It's not fun. It is not fun. It's fun on stage, but to travel is not fun. Anyone who has traveled is not fun. Tonight, 13 hours for the band to make it to this festival, and we had a blast on stage. So for this tour, a loud blast. A loud blast. We played Summer Breeze last night, which is one of the most, in my opinion, one of the most organized, well put together, amazing, professionally done festivals. And it was amazing yesterday. So we traveled for 13 hours and we made it here. Tired, we did not sleep last night. We got up at 2.30 a.m. to get here. Today was unbelievable. I must confirm what you say. We were watching the show and um, clearly it was the best sound we've been hearing uh, until now. And the festival has been going on for like two days. Do you have, um, so we were wondering if you had your, um, your own sound engineer or uh, your sound was just incredible. We do have our own sound engineer. Um, I won't give him all the credit <laughs> because the band has been together for a long time. Yeah. And even from the beginning, 
we knew as teenagers and as 20 year olds and as 30 year olds there's something special about obituary on stage there's something about it maybe because we don't try to play the most technical music in the world maybe we don't try to play the fastest music in the world but we're very confident and we're very precise on the songs that we do perform. And we knew this from a long time ago, that live, there's something about Obituary Live that it comes across and the fans feel it. And uh, tonight was no exception. Tonight was unbelievable. It was a great performance by the band and the vibe and the, the reaction from the fans just dr drove us. We almost caught on fire tonight. We almost caught on fire. I mean, when I when I looked at the crowd during your show, you were I was seeing people like ah, with their arms standing and stuff like that, and uh, yeah, it was really really um, very great performance you did. Yeah, and we do. We I think everybody saw it tonight, and most bands or most fans that see this band, they realize that we have a good time on stage. We don't take things too seriously. We're not the kind of guys that wear leather jackets, leather pants. I do not paint my face. I don't rely on props. I don't rely on breathing dragons. Obituary relies on their guitars and their drums and John's voice. We're not afraid to show up with nothing. Today we showed up with nothing. No props, no amplifiers. We used what was here for us. And you didn't have your own equipment. I only had my own pedals, you know, my bass drum pedals, and I had my own cymbals. That's all. I used the drum set that everybody used today. And um, confidence. It's confidence. It's being confident in your song and your ability as a musician. Okay. Um, we have been hearing since the beginning of the interview a band called Loud Blast. They're playing French death metal. You as being, you know, um, the founders of this music style, how do you feel about other bands playing this style? I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing that the style is still going on and that the fans still want it because there's amazing bands now. There are bands and musicians that run circles around obituary. There are musicians that run, there's drummers that run circles around me and I'll be the first to say that and admit it. Benighted. Kevin's drumming, it's, it doesn't get better than that for me. As a drummer watching another drummer, I don't understand how somebody can be so amazing. I'm the opposite. I'm not an amazing drummer, I'm just an amazing performer and I know my music well and I'm confident with what I play. So the new music is amazing and I love that bands are going to the extremes and so fast and technical and unbelievable. Obituary, we're going to stick with what we know. Solid, mid-tempo, groovy, good feeling Florida death metal. It's just the way it goes with us. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. How? Uh, what would you say to um, to someone who listens to metal music, but whose ears are not ready to listen to death metal? Because how would you say? What would you say to that guy who, who like to listen to that music style, but who cannot for the moment? You know. I would say listen to the new obituary record. <laughs> and I, again, I'm not trying to sound like a ass because I'm I'm just being honest in my in my mind. I don't like all death metal. I don't like all metal. I don't like all grindcore. I don't like all black metal. I don't understand a lot of it. It's just the way I am. I'm I am uh, in my own way. I like old metal. I like Black Sabbath. And I liked Ronnie James Dio's music. The new music and the black black metal and serious metal and I don't. Some of it I don't get. If somebody says uh, I I really don't know about death metal and I don't really think I'm gonna like it. I've heard some of it and it's a bunch of noise and I don't understand it. You haven't heard Obituary then because Obituary is not noise. We are loud, but there is a groove, there's a heartbeat, there is something going on, there's a pulse.
there's blood flowing and um and we believe that and that's that's why with the new album we could not be more excited about inked in blood where we are extremely excited about this release will you come to europe to uh, play this new album we will we'll, we'll be here uh, january 15th uh till february sometime in february we come here immediately when the album is released Uh, and then we come back and we are going to hit 2015 summer festivals again. Um, we hope. Uh, we hope we're, we hope we are, are invited because the album is released October 28th, and uh, we come here in January for uh, of for the venues for the club tour, and then we are trying our best to be invited to. Uh, back to France, back to the festivals, uh, what people want to see obituary, which is live. Back to Hellfest? Back to Hellfest, we hope. And um, during your uh, tours, uh, will you come to Paris in France and some other clubs as well? Of course. Our French fans are manic. They love obituary. They are passionate. They understand. And, uh, and we appreciate that. We appreciate that so much. Um, French fans are eager and they're crazy about obituary. And um, we, we want to come back here as quickly as we can. Festivals and for a club, a couple club shows because it's the club shows like Paris. At, it's, it's a different name now, but it used to be the uh, La Moca. La Lo La La Lalo, it's different name now. It's changed, but we want this. We want French shows, and uh, and I, I know I know the fans want that. And uh, we will we will be back. We will be back for this new album. So French guys, okay, they like obituary. What about people in the United States, and what about death metal music in the United States? It's growing like it used to be in in 1992. In the early 90s, Obituary was playing in front of massive crowds in America. But America is a humongous place. And fans and young people are very busy with other things. But it's all, it's all coming around. It's all coming around where good bands, bands that deserve to be in America and be playing Testament, Carcass, Obituary. These are bands that in America now we are still getting a great fan following. And um, we're very excited about uh, 2014 and 2015's uh, American schedule. And, and to make it back here uh, in January, February of, uh, of next year in France. What's the, do you see a difference between your shows in the United States and your shows here in, on, on the big continent? I think the difference is in America it's so widespread that if there's a club, if there's a show, and say it's 70 kilometers away, in America, if you are only 17 years old and you have no car and your friends are not going, it's impossible. Impossible. You're not going to get a train or a subway or a bus. You're not going to go. Uh, some some states like New York, Chicago, they have trains, but the heart of America, you will never make it to a show. And it's very sad. It's very sad. This is the reason why in Germany, it's huge. All the Wacken and the, uh, the summer breeze and everything. People can go get on a train and immediately go within two or three hour drive have a train take you there. In America, it's very, very, very tough for young people that don't have cars and that don't have friends that want to go. It's very, it's very tough for fans to show up to shows that are not in their only in their hometown. And it's a big country. It is a very big oh, country. It's, it's impossible and it's very sad. I see it. I see it with the festivals. We wish that kids in Florida Kids in Iowa, or somewhere out there in the Midwest, where it's not easy to get a taxi cab or a train or a subway, it's near impossible. In Florida, if I I live in Tampa, if there's a show in Orlando, which is only 100 kilometers, if I don't own a car and I don't have a friend, 
to go in a car, I, I cannot go. It's impossible. There's no train. That is really uh, amusing because the United States history has been founded on trains, and today it's it's nearly you know inexistent. I mean, there are trains. Don't get me wrong. There are trains, but it's not it's not convenient and feasible. It's not feasible. It's sad. It's sad. That's why. We see it. Why are there huge festivals in Germany and in France? Why is there a hell fest in France? Because everybody can take a train and a plane real fast. You usually take a plane, you land, and you can take a train right to the festival or close. Doesn't happen in America. You got to play like Ozfest, big, the big cities like Chicago and New York and Miami, and then all, yeah, Austin, and then they all drive themselves. But again, if you're just a 17-year-old kid or 18 and you want to go, you can't. It's it's very sad. Hopefully this changes. Hope, hopefully it branches out into festivals in certain towns where people can still show up. Meanwhile, buy the records, right? Buy the album, for God's sakes, and turn it up really loud because it's good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Donald. Thank you. Thank you.